65 million Americans are experiencing some form of mental health issue. The numbers of young people are somewhere between one in three and one in five by the time you graduate high school will have contemplated suicide. Back in the 2000s, the world was majority text, but still the only way that they could access care was either in person in therapy or by phone. So we said there is a huge missed opportunity here. Someone needed to make a hotline by text. So we built it. From the user perspective, one of the best things about the Crisis Text Line is that there's nothing you have to download or learn or do special. It's just like texting your mom or your best friend. You text us, and then the next thing that happens is you're connected with an empathetic, trained human. Crisis counselors apply online, go through a 34-hour training. You only need a laptop and an internet connection to be able to volunteer. They are home, they log onto their computer, and then they log into our platform. As a crisis counselor on the platform, you're supported by supervisors. And these are, again, full-time staff who have a master's degree in a relevant field. So there's teams of people behind you, coaches and supervisors. But the crisis counselors are the ones on the front lines. Everything that you need to support that texter is available on our platform. So we have a toolbox with helpful tips on how to support a person in different types of crises or specialized support so you can help them find something in their community. It's an incredibly powerful place that connects a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't be connected. The nature of text is really powerful in that you're not hearing the like and the um and the and. You're hearing directly what they're experiencing. You're hearing their pain, sometimes it's raw, but the fact that it's anonymous it enables people to open up. The goal of a conversation is to move someone from hot to cool, but we need to risk assess. So conversations where someone has the ideation, the plan, the means, the timing to kill themselves or someone else, and we can't de-escalate we will call in what's called an active rescue. What our data showed was that it's not suggestive to ask someone whether they are thinking of killing themselves or whether they have thoughts of death or dying. Our data also informed us of the best way to ask. So we use an expression of care model where we can incorporate the right words into a conversation and ask a texture if they have thoughts of hurting themselves. We're handling about 3,000 conversations a day. About 25 turn out to be active rescues. We are a gateway to mental health care. Because we're on text, we skew young and we skew rural, we skew low income. Two thirds of our texters are saying that they are sharing something that they've never shared with anyone else. At this point, we now have over 75 million messages exchanged with texters in crisis. The words, the language, the moment in time when they were in crisis, which means that we have the largest data set on crisis in the country. We now have over 200 partners. I think it speaks to the, the power of our data that we have other organizations reaching out to us to get access to our data and work on, on problems that can create a sea change in how we think about mental health in our country. We start to see some of the data that comes in from Crisis Text Line. You know, we're hoping to identify some trends that are affecting our youth. So if there is a rise in eating disorders that just happen to be on the West Coast, if we can see those numbers and how they're affecting our kids, then we can also try to help our local clubs provide better support and help us better serve them. A texter had begun an overdose attempt, and she texted us in saying she really wasn't sure she wanted to die, then stopped responding. We were able to get an ambulance to her, and we heard from her mom the next day that she was actually unconscious when she was taken to the hospital, and if we hadn't sent that ambulance to her, she would have been dead. There's the conversation that I had with a man recently who had just found out something terrible and was in his car with a gun. By the end of the conversation, the gun was in the glove compartment and he was ready to drive home that night and kiss his kids goodnight.
We got a lot more work to do. We're already operating in Canada and the UK, and my hope is to do 12 more countries in the next three years, so that we're in 15 countries by the end of 2021. We'll be spreading empathy and really creating more human connection around the world, and that will be awesome.